first off, thank you everybody so much for, for joining today. Um, truthfully, this series of conversations is a little bit of a dream series for me because it gives me the chance to showcase just the brilliant women uh, who make Evaro possible. Really quick, every Thursday at 4 p.m., we're going to be hosting uh, chats like this over the course of the month, um, really to honor and learn from the women change makers here at Uvaro. The reality is, each of these women who we're going to be talking to has achieved greatness in their own domain and career, but their success is not accidental. They are driven, they are humble, they are authentic, and they are where they are today because of the actions that they've taken and the choices that they've made. And so that's why we're looking to celebrate and honor them. And today's conversation itself is the perfect starting point to do that. It's about understanding your why and why the heck it even matters when it comes to career success uh, at all. And that's, of course, why we're beginning with Alex, our head of career programming at Uvaro. And I got to say, Alex, I love this conversation so much. And if it's OK with you, I will take one more minute because I want to tell you a story. OK, go for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Right. Um, so when we first met, uh, it was after I had stalked you on LinkedIn for a period of time and introduced myself and was incredibly grateful that you had decided to take my call and, and have a conversation with me because um, immediately, as soon as we got to talking, your energy, your passion, the motivation that you were able to just deliver in your speech was immediately obvious. And truthfully, I don't think I've ever met anybody who has that unique ability to, to, to channel just positive energy and self-belief into other people. I think that's truly a, a unique superpower. And I remember the first time being in class with you, you were, of course, bringing your best energy, your best self to the room. And the first time we're in class together, you asked me a very simple question. You said, Donna, what's your why? I was the example. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I know. And I don't think I've ever told you this, but uh, it was the very first time I have ever been on the receiving end of that particular activity uh, because up until this point, I had been the one to ask people and, you know, coached by Hannah, another, you know, incredible woman um, who's in, the, in this community as well. But it was the first time that the tables had really been turned and um, I, I wasn't expecting it by any stretch. And so when you asked me, I was just like, uh, <laughs> totally jibber jabbering. And uh, as an introvert, you know, the first thing I, I responded with some kind of robotic response and you were like, okay, great. But why? <laughs> and I was like, I, was, I am actually starting to sweat and like get uncomfortable. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, is she going to ask me this so many times? What am I going to do? And so it was the first time I'd ever been in that situation. And by the end, the last time that you asked me, you know, why is that? I know I was just a part of, part of the example, but I had learned something new about myself. And I knew just in that period of time, um, that you were, you were truly, truly special. And we were so grateful to, to have you be on our team. Um, I don't think I ever told you that, did I? You didn't, you know, and yeah. I listened to that story and I'm like, wow, I thank goodness they hired me after that, <laughs> after poking Donna, uh, you know, as much as possible, but no, you didn't tell me that. And I'm, um, I mean, I'm incredibly grateful because it's, it's tough to be on the giving end of asking you know, because we know how difficult it can be to pull that out and to be really on the spot and think, oh my God, I, I don't know, you know, and it's, uh, it's really fascinating. So thank you for telling me that. And I'm sorry, but I'm also <laughs> No, it's, I just, I have I don't think I've been a guinea pig since. So I must've, my jibber jabbering, go to, go to, go to, must've been like, oof, let's, let's, <laughs> let's not <Yeah>. ask. <laughs> Your group is awesome. Well. Good, good. <laughs> well, I think it's only, only a, appropriate then to start off the conversation coming full circle um, with a very simple question. Alex, what is your why? Good, it just breaks down into tears. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> my, my goal of our conversation today, by the way, and to everyone here, is to hopefully make everyone here laugh in some capacity, not because I'm like, hey, I'm a comedian, but because it's important that everyone knows that what is your why is not one size fits all and it's not one time fits all. I, I have changed my why multiple times, even in the last few months, 
versus when I started here and what being here at Ubarro has taught me. And it's funny that Donna was saying that to me because of what I've learned from Donna specifically, how she's been able to change my why. And so to get to the nitty gritty, and I know a lot of you have heard this story from me, whether it was in class or, or somewhere else, those of you who are newcomers, hi, how are you? Um, but I, I struggled a lot in my career. And so I'm going to get really vulnerable here for a second because this is the place where we can actually speak about some of the things that have happened that have affected us so much that we really question who we are and what it is that we've done. When I started in recruiting back in 2012, I had a mentor and he was amazing. He was somebody who owned a boutique recruitment company and had chosen me super new out of university history degree. I had zero idea <laughs> what I wanted to do with my life and who I was. I was like, la, 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 I just need to do something. And I applied to a position in Toronto called recruiting in the advanced product development market, whatever the heck that meant. Right. And so I ended up meeting this man and he was just unbelievable with being able to describe what to do. He was my first movement into sales. Now, we were together for about a year and a half and he ended up getting incredibly sick mentally and he ended up taking his own life and it was shocking and something that i never thought I would go through personally, especially in a work environment and with somebody that I considered my mentor and kickstarted my career. And so when that happened, I learned how to take down a company instead of build one up at a very tender age in my career. And it allowed me to question a lot of things, whether it was in recruitment or whether it was just in myself and wanting to do this type of job, but I had to do something. Raise your hand if you're like, I need a job. Have you ever felt that? Like I need one, right? Sometimes we don't have the luxury to go ahead and just figure it out. You know, I'm gonna spend months and months and months to understand what I wanna do. And so I stumbled through and found more jobs in recruiting and in tech, but in agencies. And then I went to an in-house talent management position. And then I went ahead and went to a big bank. I went to a startup. Raise your hand if you've ever like stopped and thought, I need a career change. I got to do something different. I can't do this anymore. Yeah, 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 me too. <laughs> and so getting to the real core of the answer that you've heard about of what is your why, I've been in that position where I've done everything that I possibly could in recruiting and in sales, and I liked it, but something was niggling in the back of my mind that was really making me suffer. And I didn't acknowledge it until I decided to completely quit my job and enter an accelerated bootcamp. I became a UX designer, but something wasn't right. Something still wasn't right. You know, I loved it, it was confusing, but I kept talking about, well, here, here's a good way, classmate of mine, to actually go and do your job search. I figured this out and it's really interesting. And I started to get really passionate and really intense and, and talking to the whole class, my classmates, about how to do their job search and how to speak about themselves and how to prepare them for an interview. And it wasn't until then that the owner of the company came to me and asked me if I wanted to be the career coach, thought it even dawned on me that I could do that. I was like, what? <laughs> and so to really answer that question, what is your why? The movement stemmed for me to understand what my why was in my career from someone being incredibly mentally unstable and losing their life. The beginning of it, was I was fired from my very first job. And so if you look at this story and you're like, how did this girl end up being a career coach and, and still in tech? After she got fired, she had a mentor pass away. She took down a company. She changed her whole entire career. She started talking about things on how to get better in their jobs to people. How did this amount to this? And why is it your why? When I got fired from my first job, it was, I killed all the plants. <laughs> I killed all the plants at a garden center. And the owner was like, you gotta go. I'm so sorry. I was 16 years old and it was the worst. 
I went out to my dad's car and was like crying. He laughed. I cried harder, but it wasn't because I had the little manager who was, I think 20 years old, tell me to rewater the plants, right? They told me to rewater the plants. And I said, I already did that. I don't think I should. And then, so I did it anyway, because I was told, and then I got fired. <laughs> but people always think that the moral of the story is stand up for yourself, go with your gut, but that's not it. The moral of that story was I never wanted anybody to feel the way that I felt when I was let go because holy moly, that doesn't define you, right? I never wanted that to happen. And so then I graduated, moved into this recruitment, went through a bit of a tragedy, <laughs> figured out I didn't want to do that, how much it was affecting me, changed my career, and then fell back into it. Because back when I got fired, I never wanted somebody to feel the way that I felt if they got let go. And so I hope that you guys are listening to the story. It's a little disjointed, but you can make those connecting points and say everything that Alex had thought about or had done always connected back to a career, whether she was 16 years old to now. And so my why is just ensuring people know that they have an unbelievable amount of potential regardless of what happens to them. And you never should feel pushed down if something happens to you in your career because you can always get back up and find a connecting point to continue what it is that you love to do. And listen to the people who acknowledge it and say, do you want to be the career coach? Do you want to be in sales? Something like that, right? And so... This isn't a one size fits all. I've never told that whole length of story to people. I'm just pulling it out right now. But it is amazing at how much you do that affects the way that you think and the way that you teach, and then eventually tell your story of why you are the way that you are. Long winded, Donna, but <laughs> it's uh, but perfect. But perfect. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to walk through each of those. Each of those experiences um, has so much depth to to it uh, in and of itself and so thank you for for for, for doing that um what i loved specifically about that the, what you just shared is having worked with you now for you know more than a year which is wild to think about we're coming on two years i know um <laughs> i've 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 had conversations with you i've seen conversations where you know, you start, what's your, what's your why? And, and someone will share a, a piece of information and then you go, well, let's go at one layer deeper. Why is that? And what you did was the opposite where you, you shared stories and helped us understand how the, they contribute to what is your, the why that's motivating you today, but it's the, the opposite approach. So kind of that bottoms up versus top down. So I think giving us that insight and visibility was was very special and, and uh, I can appreciate the learning that happened along the way. Um, yeah. Something that you said, in, and, and I have a bunch of questions and we're gonna work through them, but something that you said there, um, something wasn't right, niggling feelings, something wasn't right. How did you know something wasn't right? What, does, what did that feel like? A lot of things, you know, and have, has anybody ever felt that you're, you're staring at something and you get that glass-eyed feeling, right? It's almost like you're talking to somebody who's rambling a little too much, like I maybe have just done, you're like, <laughs> and you can't focus. That was me a lot of the time, you know, and I, I had spent 15 grand up front and quit my job entirely to do this thing. So I knew that I had to make a move, that something needed to change. You know, I, it was just too much. But I was sitting there and I was learning, you know, keyboard shortcuts to become a UX designer. And I kept thinking, well, I'm a creative person. I'm creative, I'm creative. But remember that high level word creative, well, what the hell is that mean? I'm creative, does it mean like, I'm, I'm, I, well, I can paint some stuff. But should I define my career by that? And I ended up like looking at my computer and looking at my sheets of paper and feeling incredibly disconnected with what I thought I wanted to do and what my body and my brain was actually doing. And so I started to see and listen to myself and the conversations that I kept having with people, which always centered around, oh, you're struggling with your job search? Well, let me help you. It's okay. I can do that. I was taking what I did before, but 
continuing to talk about it in a different way, right? And I was leaving behind the task at hand that I needed to do to get better in school. And it was weird and it was, it was frustrating because I knew I was behind. And then I kept getting that paralysis type of feeling and that glassy eyed, I can't keep going, but I could keep going in the conversations I was having with people who wanted to better themselves and to do something cool at a new job. And so, like I said, it wasn't until the CEO was just like, do you want to do something like that? (laughs) And I actually saw myself frustrating the current career coach because I kept raising my hand not to answer the design questions, but to actually challenge what the career coach was telling the class to do. How annoying is that? <laughs> like pretty bad, pretty bad, right? But I had to listen. I had to listen to myself and say, okay, obviously it's some, there's something different. Uh, and it just so happened that the sales aspect of recruiting, I couldn't do anymore. But what I could do was help people elevate. Mm-hmm. And I did that. Awesome. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I think what I what I really appreciated about what you just shared there was there was this niggling feeling. It didn't feel right. Boredom, symptoms. I know we've all been there in positions where, where you're disengaged. Um, but there were aspects about what was going on around you that you felt yourself gravitating toward. And so it sounds like for individuals who find themselves in a situation where they, they just don't feel right, something's not right. Um, what they can do is listen for those moments and look for those moments where they do lean into one particular subject matter. When they find themselves leaning in, asking, you know, what is it about this? And have I done it before? Because it sounds like your ability to connect doing it multiple times and then realizing it's about the same topic was a really important realization for you. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you find yourself researching something more and more, listen to that, see it for what it is, and don't just question it, try and understand it. Yeah, awesome. Um, And so I'd love to, I'd love to know you've obviously spent lots of time synthesizing this, thinking about this. Uh, I understand why motivation matters so much. And I think we can all see that in in your story and understand that for what you've communicated. But I'd love to know, uh, to the, you know, to the best of your ability, why Does it matter to think about your why? Oh my goodness. (laughs) I think most people here can finally now answer that question. I don't know if you guys have seen Derek Zoolander in either my decks or that movie, Zoolander. You know, it's always when you find your reflection and you look in a puddle and you're like, who am I? You know, And, and that fight of feeling kind of dejected because you're asking yourself, who am I? Or what's my why? Why am I like this? Why am I doing that? Raise your hand if you've ever done that and felt kind of frustrated about it. Yeah, good, good. I'm so glad you guys feel frustrated about yourselves. (laughs) Just kidding. But honestly, honestly, at the end of the day, I would much rather you think about your why or who you are every day, mark it down because we're constantly changing. As I had mentioned earlier, It's so important to navigate what that looks like because your feelings change and your priorities change on a weekly, almost daily basis, right? And so I'm a different person as I was a couple of weeks ago, just simply because things have shifted in my life. I like broke my knee back in November and my entire world exploded and changed my priorities and the way that I looked at what I did, who I was, how I was going to tackle this. And Through that, I've been driving around a lot more, which is interesting. And I've been taking my camera with me because if I can't walk physically and look at stuff, I might as well drive around and take a camera to show people what I found. And what has happened when I said, why am I doing this? You know, why should I take the time to do that when I actually just want to go walking and hiking outside? What happened when I did that last weekend? I got out of the car and I took my telephoto lens and I stood on the edge of the most snowy field you've ever seen in your life (laughs) and spotted a snowy owl. And it was just sitting in the middle of the field and it was looking at me and I took my lens up and I took a photo and I looked at it and it was awesome. And I looked at my car and I knew that if I had never, if I hadn't made the decision and I questioned who I was in that moment, what my why was, 
why I still wanted to go outside, while I still needed to be able to understand why being out in nature connects directly with how I coach and the stories that belong with it, right? I, I started to understand all of that. And I wouldn't have had that experience if I wouldn't have done it. And now Donna can ask me, why is it so important to understand your why and, and think about it every day? Well, because of that, because you wouldn't be able to take something that happened to you and connect it back to who you are at your core and be able to give a lesson to anyone who would listen. Because sharing that art of who you are is one of the most powerful things that you could do. And I have to be honest with you, standing and taking a photo of something that wasn't looking to be found was one of the most profound things I've ever done. And I want to take that back and teach every single person what that meant and how it connects back to your why and how it can completely change the way you look at who you are. So again, long-winded, but man, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, beautiful. Uh, for so many reasons, what stands out to me with what you've just said is why is it important to find your why to think about your why it's because in the act of discovering the answers, you discover new truths about yourself and thinking about your why and trying to answer that and questioning yourself drove you to take actions. You drove a car around for somebody, maybe it's walking around a block. Uh, but either way, the actual act of thinking these things through brought you to a new place. And to your point, you were able to, to discover something that, that uh, profoundly impacted you. Donna, I, I need to tell everyone something. While I coach, <laughs> and I coach all of you, and I'll coach any of you who choose to join Yavaro, coaches need coaches. And coaches need people like Donna is to me that can take things that I say that can be a little bit disjointed and telling that story and unbelievably and beautifully and succinctly package them into a lesson within like one sentence. I teach people how to do that, but sometimes I can't do it myself. But Donna can, and I gravitate towards her like no one else I've ever done. And so it's amazing and it's important to find somebody who can do that with you and for you. And so you can continue on that journey to understand your why, even if you teach it. It's not one size fits all. Sometimes it's disjointed. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. It's easier, it's easier to teach than this to do sometimes. And Donna is that bridge for me. And I'm so glad everybody got to see that. Thank you, Alex. I mean, talking with you is always such a pleasure. So I think it's actually um, reflecting on that a little bit. I think, you know, what, what Alex and I both share in common is that love for helping others uh, discover different aspects about themselves, because truthfully, it's discovering aspects about yourself in the process. So I appreciate that. Thank you. She did it again. Did you see that? <laughs> it's, it's Yception. We're Yceptioning. I love it. Yception. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I'm always cognizant of the time because I'm, I'm so grateful for, for the minutes that people do spare with us. Uh, so in the remaining time that we have together, um, I'd love to, to get your thoughts. Are there, is there any advice or recommendations that you'd give people who are struggling to determine their why, or even they can't even justify spending the time to do it? What might you provide them with? Not being able to justify finding the time to do it. I, I, that's like a bad word. <laughs> to me. I, don't even know how to answer <laughs> I mean, if, if anybody is, is feeling, and again, raise your hand if you feel this, but if, if you're feeling like you are disjointed, you know, or you don't know how to answer a question, like, tell me about yourself or what is your why, or why do you want to work here? Or why does that matter to you? right? Alex with a Y, get it up there, right? Raise your hand if you've ever felt any of that. I know everyone here has, honestly, genuinely, right? And so <clears throat> taking the time to accept that fact that you are having a hard time answering why questions, that should always be the motivator to go ahead and just take a piece of paper. I'm going to show you this. I ran out of my notebook. <laughs> And so I just have random computer paper that I just write things all over. <laughs> all over I, yeah, I appreciate that. That's literally to the, to the right of my desk is that. But <laughs> yeah. Right. 
And so the easiest thing that you can do that doesn't take a lot of, of effort is just pick up one of these things and take a few pieces of paper and write down anything that you can that goes along with why. Why are you like this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's okay to write, I don't know. It's okay. Because why don't you know? Well, I don't know because my head is full of stuff. Well, why is it full of stuff? Well, I'm feeling a little frustrated with my career right now. I can go in this direction or this direction, or I just feel like I can't understand what I want to do. Okay, well, why? And why is that important to you? And so if you continuously ask yourself why, and you've gotten into flow state with this little sneaker peeker right here, and you're just nailing it down and writing down why, 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 eventually you're going to get to a place that you can no longer ask why or what does that mean? And then you circle it and you look at that and you say, I need to change my career because I'm unbelievably unhappy. Okay, why? And then you continue to move it down. What does that mean? Why did you get to that place? How is it happening like that? There's all of these things that are, you're gonna ask yourself that you can get to the root of what that looks like. And this is called our why forests or why trees. Right? We've got fruit at the top of the trees, but no one who's below can eat that fruit. And so we need to shake that tree and let that fruit fall, which is you being very specific about why you're choosing to do the things that you're doing and why you're not doing the things that you're doing. So we can be sustained to help enough to understand what it is that you need and how we can move forward. And so again, it's not easy to do this. It is not one size fits all. You know, but if you find someone like I found Donna, or you folks have found each other, or you guys chat with me if we're actively coaching together, right? We are bridges and validators and enablers to help get you to that point. And it is the most being able to answer why in any capacity about yourself is the hardest, but it is it is the most rewarding thing that you'll ever do. And if you can do that every, every day or every week or every month, you're going to find so many different layers. And then you're going to go find snowy owls, or you're going to go talk to that person that you really want to talk to or attack that career, right? It is the thing that will unlock you. And I want to help you. So please reach out if you feel like you need some guidance with that. I, uh, it is the thing that will unlock you a thousand percent. Yes. And you using your little fiddly woodly, whatever you called it, your pencil, just is such a good reminder that your physical self is as much a part of this as it is your mental self. And so going through the exercise of writing, of walking, literally does something different than looking at a computer screen. So I love that reminder as well, because we're all in a state of looking at computer screens right now. And phones and television. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, so much uh, for this conversation. I love the chats. Uh, it sounds like there's lots of activity that's going to happen after this conversation as well, which I'm, I'm excited about. Um, thank you, everybody here for joining today for our customers who make these conversations possible. Um, if you enjoyed this, we are going to be hosting another one next Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time with Alana Schulman, our director of sales. And we're going to be digging into the power of unblocking yourself um, as it relates to performance and careers and why that's important for career success. So Alex, you could not have gotten us off to a better start. Thank you. Thank you Thank so much. Um, I love the unlocking and then the unblocking that's about to come up. <laughs> Very cool. Right, right. That's all Bronte. Um, I love it. So Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us. I will let you get back to your days and, uh, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye everyone.